guys ready? Is it happening? It's happening when you're ready. I'll press the button. You Do tell it. me. Do it. Oh. Uh oh. Get that B out of here. Fun new noise. Ah. <coughs> Which one am I? This one. I'm gonna have to do that and cough a bunch of times. Oh shit! Oh, I forgot to bring forks for the. Oh so no! Treats. Forks? Um, probably forks or spoons, probably. Which one? I'm going up. I'm thinking forks would be forky spoony. Most beneficial. Knifey spoony. You don't no, I, I I had a piece of it earlier though. So. Then I went to uh, Walmart. Yeah. Walked by the section with the records. Yeah. Had my son with me. Yeah. Saw the new Beyonce record. Had to put the Pentatonix Christmas album right in front of it. Cover it up. What was it? Lewd? It's <laughs> it's fairly lewd. Really? I'd say so. <clears throat> I'll look that up. I'm happy there's a new Pentatonix album. And that's not the lewd one. That's not what I was talking about. Is it her riding a horse? Yeah. Hmm. Beyonce riding a horse. Explicit version. There's one, the explicit versions where she's underneath the horse. <laughs> it's being lowered. <laughs> <laughs> You guys ready? Ready. Cut that out. They're trying to tell us something. They have figured out the formula for chaos. When the clock strikes half past eight, babe, time to head for Chris's house. Hey. Will the sun make it to the next round? Oh, no. Pot of thunder. Let's pot tonight. Come on, baby, let's pot tonight. Uh. Uh. Woo. Oh, yeah. Who can give it? Mm. Continue with that level. Yes. Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting brought to you by Blue Microphones. They look great. They sound even better. And you know me. Andy Johans producing. Ratings never fall. Andy Johans live stream. Best dressed one of all. Wow, getting more and more ambitious as the weeks go by. There's nowhere else to go but up, I guess. That's true. Well, thanks to Gary Branville. For oh, that was Gary's idea. Suggestion huh? for that one. What was that based on? I can't pinpoint. Does Andy know? Is that David Bowie song? Yes, it is. I'm, just, I'm trying to pinpoint which one it is. I know the song, but it's it's got it's Andy something. <clears throat> I don't remember. It's Andy That's Warhol. It. Oh, mm. all right. Okay, I know I knew the the tune, but I couldn't pinpoint it. Well, very well done. Yes. Look at this. You're not even going to believe what's about to happen. <laughs> I can't even get it I'm making him go. Polk dancing his way across the podcast studio. Look at him go. Nick, Nick Polak has entered the program. Nick, welcome to the show. 
You have trouble getting that cape on over your uh, hoodie? Such a big hoodie I've got on. I it is a big cape. hoodie. Is it a new item for you? No, I've had it for a while, but it's a... Uh, big hoodie. Big hoodie. That's, you don't need a coat. you got a big hoodie. Nick's bringing his B-H-E to the <laughs> podcast. Today. Yeah. Purple, even. Is it purple? It's brown. It's got... It, oh, it's brown. But in this okay. light, I could see where... Yeah. We've I, all made that mistake before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> That is dicey. <laughs> Thankfully, we made that mistake tonight amidst, amongst ourselves and not yeah. in mixed company. Yeah. It would be a dangerous situation. Mm-hmm. Well, Nick, welcome to the program. Uh, I'm glad to have you. Thank you. Thank and directly you. to your left, you want him. We got him. I can have it every day. Put your hands together for the breakout star of the podcast medium. That is Chris L. We are Pot of Thunder. And we're back. We're fired up here in uh, November to make it happen. I don't know what's going on. Special month. Nope, not a special month. Just <laughs> just a regular wow. old, uh, after two themed months in a row, you know, it seems. Who's, uh, whose pick is it tonight? I didn't look at the it's order. Andy's is pick. it mine? Is it, I think yeah. we're back. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. He comes after me. So. Okay. How are you guys feeling this week? You were out of commission last week. Andy, test positive, negative. I'm ready to go in the ground. Good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Were you through the ringer this time? No, it wasn't bad. <laughs> Unrelated. <laughs> Nothing to do with illness. <laughs> just ready to go on the ground. Uh, no, it wasn't too bad for me. I just didn't want to spread it around. Well, of course yeah, not. But and, yeah. and Nick, your your uh, malady is past. No, I mean it's going to linger for a couple of weeks probably. But the worst, you know, the initial stuff is over. All yeah. right. I so. had COVID. Nick did not. But somehow we got sick at the same. I time. will be uh, congested for quite a while. That's yeah. just that's I, I'm I know other people who are like that too where they you don't get a cold and then it's suddenly over it just lingers it lingers and there's very slow stages that it goes through for some people I'm one of those people has it been like that your whole life you think I think so yeah well, yeah if I it's it's not like yeah it it doesn't go away quickly okay it's it's there and it's there to stay hmm well, that's no fun. I'm sorry for you, Nick. Yeah, well. Yeah, I feel like that uh, has gotten worse for me as I've gotten older. Well, it doesn't get better as you <laughs> no, get older. No, I wouldn't so. think so. Yeah, but then, just, just square that away immediately. But it wasn't the case at all. I was like what Nick was saying, where it would just be a couple of days and I'd be back to 100% whenever I got sick. No, but that's not that's, the case anymore. No. These things lingered longer. It's not fun. But mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the new normal. <laughs> that's good i'm glad let, to hear about the new normal <laughs> let's, I haven't heard about that in a while let's just well it keeps changing what is the new normal I there is know. no new normal man it, i don't even know what it the, keeps changing we're three years into COVID. i don't even know what the rules are anymore with well, how long you're supposed to wait or whatever well, nobody cares about that let's just yeah. put it that way Remember there's no like, tallies on the news there's no you know, you just uh, I think uh, if if you learned anything, that's what people should have been doing all along. Is if you're sick with anything, you shouldn't feel the need to go into an office and make everybody else sick. Yeah. yeah. If, if anything, I was talking about this recently with our friend Steve Caldwell. I was saying if anything good came out of COVID, it's that that's become kind of accepted when before it was always tough it out. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And which oh, yeah. was stupid. Yeah. But you know, yeah, that's uh, you. You know, they move the goalposts with everything with the work from home thing. But you know, if you just just say, "Look, I'm sick and I'm contagious," <laughs> mm-hmm. anybody who shames you into showing up to the workplace is a total asshole. Yeah, you should be exposed to the world. <laughs> Call like your local investigative reporter on your news network and tell yeah. them exactly what's going on. Get, Expose these people for public shaming. Get Pam Zeckman. 
or uh, what was the other, other lady's name? Carol Marine. <laughs> yeah, one of those ladies. Turn them so. loose on them. Yeah, they'll come is, for you. Is your favorite uh, investigative reporter no longer with us? Who was that? Walter Jacobson. Oh, Walter Jacobson. <laughs> I don't think he is. No, he's, I don't. He's long gone. He's gone. Active. Uh, I don't, uh, he might still be alive. But, yeah, that uh, guy That guy was a pit bull. He was. Walter Jacobson. Remember there was that brief period, that golden age of Fox 32, where they had Bill Curtis and Walter Jacobson yes. side by side? Yes. Man, they must have spent their whole budget on that. People were not messing around. Thank goodness Walter Jacobson's still alive. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's 86. Good for him. Good for you, Walter. Um... <laughs> <laughs> 86 jeez yeah. he's kicking it's up there he's still kicking around uh you know the other thing though it's never always it never goes completely in the favor of regular people it's all you know okay you don't have to come in anymore but you still have to work even though you're sick at home that's the other thing yeah you know well i remember um working retail about 20 years ago um, a couple days before Christmas, mm-hmm. I had a flu. So I was like fever, you know, having to run to the bathroom. I show up to work. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a busy day. It's retail a couple days before Christmas. And I go tell my manager, I'm like, look, <laughs> this is how I am right now. Yeah. And immediately was like, you're going to get written up if you leave. <laughs> so the manager That's said. That's immediately what she said. Up. She said, she said you can't it's a bl-. she called it a blackout period where you cannot call off and i said i'm really oh, i said it, i'm really I'll, sick she said i'll re- you'll get written up <laughs> she said, i don't care but right imagine up. imagine right that in the in imagine that from 2020 onward yeah hey i'm going to come across a thousand customers at the register today and i might get all of them sick yeah, get written up. Don't care. <laughs> like, you said that it was a blackout period. That's because it was like extra hands for the holidays or something. I like guess, they needed yeah. everyone. You yeah. couldn't call off, or you get written up. You get written which up. means zero. It means nothing. Yeah, and and actually, and uh, that's another thing uh, over time that you can't even call it a blackout period anymore. It's now known as an R toad period. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you know. <laughs> It was a different time, it's called, as we like to say on this show. <laughs> the, um, hold up, I'm looking up the correct number. The BR65. 65, <laughs> 65 uh, is the right tone? Yeah, that's, that's the uh, cough up a long tone, mm. basically. Mm. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> Isn't it wild, you guys, living through this kind of change? That, it is. That you're, you're old enough to have seen this transition in society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I quite guess. a bit has happened in not a great amount of time, but I'm sure that's how history always is, right? Yeah, it tends to be. Yeah. Well, you know what's about to be history. Whatever Nick <laughs> I hope prepared so. in this foil, I hope so. Mm. Take it all. Who wants to eat dainty? <laughs> Who wants to eat baked treats with me? Oh, oh, oh. What's under the foil? I don't know what it is. But here's a clue. There's, now, there's a, a little uh, topping for you guys to share. Mm, there's a separate Tupperware topping. Oh, yeah. I was wondering what the fuck that was. Let's find so, out. you know, Thanksgiving's coming. It is. That's pie season, you know. Okay. More so than any other time of the year, in my opinion. Okay. Straight up pie season. So I made a pie. Mm-hmm. Um, got an idea. Looked it up. It existed. Mm-hmm. I followed the recipe. Um, I was... So well, wait a minute, you conceived this pie not knowing if it even existed? It, it happens all the time. You get an idea for some, like anything yeah. like that, <laughs> and almost all the time when you look it up, it exists. That uh, happens to yeah. me when I think of some odd, like basically some odd combination of words from pop culture, and I look it up, and there's a meme about it already, and I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah, Or like I'm merchandise. Yeah. Like, what if there was a shirt that had this on it? Oh, there it is. Damn it, they already put a pocket on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> or as Andy and I know from uh, being in the business, uh, sexual fetish. Oh, yeah. Anything you can think of. And beyond. Somebody is fascinated with uh, with it in large numbers. And it's happened on video. Yeah. And I can assure <laughs> you guys the texture is right. Mm. It's not water pie uh, consistency. What we have here, so I was watching, I forget, something, and they were showing like Thanksgiving food and things like that, and I saw a uh, corn cob, and I thought, 
I wonder if there's like any kind of you know cause cornbread is good, right? Yeah. Corn pie. So is, that what is there a, is? such a thing as a corn custard pie? You better believe there is. Of course there is, huh? And is there such a thing as uh, honey whipped cream topping to go uh, on top of sure. your corn pie? There is now. There there's is this right here. There you go. You Did start, you get some? Not yet, but you started. So there's the. That's the honey whipped cream, and then the the corn custard pie. It's got some cinnamon. Um, a little bit of lime juice it called for, so I'm like, all right, I'll do that too. Mm. Yeah, lime juice in what the topping? Or the no, in the filling of the of the, the pie. It actually well, it called called pie. for zest, but who has lime zest laying around? I don't even know what that is. This is where you get little uh, bits of the outer peel of the lime. You have to zest a lime. Yeah, thank you. Could uh, did, yeah. didn't do that. But uh, no, I, I I I had a little bit earlier. So uh, this is a corn custard pie. Is corn that? custard pie, not to be confused with the corn turd fritter <laughs> that I've heard about. <laughs> corn turd fritter. Yeah. Hmm. Look that one up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so this will help uh, get us in touch with our uh, with our native friends i think with the with the corn here yeah maybe that was big right well corn was a big part of that diet oh yeah huge i believe they called it maize that's right corn and pigs that's that's where we live that's the that's the diet yeah okay any thoughts Chris? corn and pigs sounds like the clientele <laughs> at the uh bullpen luxury <laughs> sports bar <party. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> uh it's very good oh good yeah i like the topping interesting yeah good stuff yeah, it's just uh whipping cream with uh, a little cream of tartar if anybody out there is uh wondering why their whipped cream always separates and starts to get liquidy throw a little cream of so tartar like the in there fish sauce I, I i don't know if they use it in tartar sauce i'm not exactly sure what the connection is with that but just a, a white powder, like uh, similar to a uh, cornstarch, but mm. yeah. or cocaine, possibly. Perhaps <laughs> feel an extra skip in your step eating it. Somebody mixed up the cornstarch with something else. <laughs> oh, you Andy, gotta be you gotta, careful. I wonder if Andy's gonna. Oh, I'm gonna have some. But I'm gonna eat. save it. Is he gonna eat? I'm I gonna hope. eat. I, okay. I'm always eating. Are you? He's eating. Well, Good. look at him. He's massive. <laughs> he's massive. A big boy. I've, I think he's, he's going to break another office he, chair. He's so just about really hit. Break I'd, the floor. He's about hit the ideal weight, I think, for his height now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, really? <laughs> right? I, I think my, if you looked at my statistics on paper, you would say, hmm, the perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody's BMI is off. That's just, you know, we've talked about that before. That's bogus. BMI just, being the ultimate scam. Yeah. It's just so that's that. body mass index, right? Yeah. Well, I don't even know how they calculate that though. What is that based on? Or why is it always wrong? It's it well, it's it always it's seems an, it's like, an impossible oh, okay. level to reach to be supposedly healthy. Okay. Yeah. It's always over. You have to have the body of a gymnast in order to have the proper BMI, basically. Mm. I remember those days. Yeah, the body of a genius. B- <laughs> BMI and Ancestry.com. <laughs> no, not, answer, not Ancestry.com. More the 23andMe. Biggest oh. scams going. Oh, we're biggest scams. I thought you were going to say where it tells you your uh, whatever you've got. What diseases you have coming around the bend based on your DNA. Well, that could be. But <sighs> yeah, Telling you anything about your family history. Well, you just think it's better to not know? Well, it's a complete scam. How so? It's not true. Why not? Yours came back completely... No, it didn't. It's just the one lie that we choose to believe is, not, has been erased. No. It's, it's not true. It, it, was in, it was within the last, I don't know, 60 years must that not, this person was alive? Must not have been biological. I, I No, it's a, it's, it's a scam. It's not. 
It's not true. What, well, ancestry? No. Nick, Nick thinks what, it's which not Which one true. did you do that was totally bogus? Oh, and, I did two different and, ones, and, so they were both identical. <laughs> well, they could be run by the same person. Well, not identical. I'm, but I'm making that accusation. That that part of it, we're the talking The same about. criminal over, overlord. <laughs> It's it's run by uh, universities trying to stop giving away scholarships to people <laughs> claiming to be Native American. Exactly, that's what, the investment. Exactly. Yep. There you have it. That's it. We've gotten to the bottom of it. It's my big college, a big college <laughs> scam. We've got a Native American theme going on here with the corn ch- uh, corn custard pie and being and robbed of our birthrights. Yeah. yeah. You see, you notice I get quiet when you make these jokes. I don't find them funny anymore, Nick. <laughs> Because you're not. Because I'm not Native you're American anymore. No, you're no anymore. longer Native. Huh? No, back when I was, I would be laughing and pitching in. So you're saying you're not Native American? You thought you were? Well, we, we were lied to and we told are. that we were. <laughs> we are. <coughs> Nick, don't make me laugh. We absolutely are. I don't feel good. Don't make me cough. You, you sound like you feel great. Nick is a Cherokee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that was. That's that's one of them I'd heard. Mm. Well, of course you heard it. They, they knew you liked the Europe song, and they said, oh, you know, you're you're actually a Cherokee. No. Would you take the te- uh, DNA test and see if you have it in you or not, or you don't want to do it? No, I would take it, oh, but my, this could be fun. my faith in it is not very high. Why? Because yours, Science. yours came back bogus. Mm-mm. Completely bogus. Everything else was everything else we've ever heard. There's just one thing that's omitted. Well, which was what? There's Native no Native American great great grandmother. I think is what it would be. Yeah, not that zero not, Native American. Zero, I mean, not that not even a has sliver. Not that far removed. Yeah, it's not that. It's not like. Here's what probably happened. It was probably someone that got remarried, and they just never told that part of the story. So they had a child with a different woman. He threw her down the stairs and then married some Native American woman to raise her. That's what happened. That wouldn't surprise me in our family history. <laughs> Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Into the cellar. (laughs) And sat on top of the door. That should have shown up somewhere. (laughs) See? Yeah. Yeah. They don't tell you that stuff. There's there's family violence in your saliva. They they leave out the criminal history. (laughs) Yeah, there's See there's That's a arson. different test. There's arson and horse theft in your saliva. You know what you can I think I'm gonna start a new service where I'll read it first. You can pay me ten dollars and I'll read it for you first. And if there's something you don't want to find out, I'll just keep it to myself. <laughs> Give you the news you want. You'll get all the interesting graphs and uh, you know these days that's the, maps with that's desirable. Yeah, colorful maps with what percentages you are. But if you want me to change something, I'll change it for you to make you believe I think, whatever I lies. Think you're onto something yeah. with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. What are we doing here? It's my turn to pick from the list. It is it? your turn. We're going back to the list. Uh, been a while. It has been a long time, hasn't it? My yeah, we goodness. missed uh, the beginning. The f- took the first week of Spooktober off and went for four episodes, and then we missed last week due to illness. That's six weeks without oh, goodness. going to the list. What a group of reprobates but we then, are. But we had September, too. Uh, yeah, that's true. So it's yeah, been we, since August. We, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, it's been yeah. even longer than we thought. Yeah, it's been two months, so yeah. what's what's it up to now? What's the total? 1,020. Well, that's not bad. It's creeping up there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good, good, good. Um, So it's my pick. Um, All right. I'm just going to fire it up here and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, I got the number 321. 321, 321. And it's interesting. Mm, might be a 321 mm. blast off. We might do it, but I think for fun, I'm just going to put it in my back pocket just to see. Give this old machine a spin. Make sure everything's working still. Come and so. see this old fool. Exactly. Here we go. Uh, 446. Let's roll down a little bit on the list here and see what's at 446. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> I'm jo- I'm sorry. It's not dumb. It's probably wonderful. It's just not as good as the first one. 
Okay. Mm, well, fair. then it's then it's garbage. You think it's garbage? It sounds like. All right. Move along to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Once more for the hell of it. I got five sixty-five. Five sixty-five. It's a good. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Doesn't seem like. I think we'll go with the first one. My goodness. And that's good. I think it's going to be fun. It's nice. <clears throat> it's on here twice, so people like it. Making everybody happy. Yeah, this is good. So we're going to go with the number 322, and it's also 321. 321? Or sorry, 321, and it's also 322. What do you mean? It's, it's on here twice. Yeah. Submitted it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, it's a bit of a reach, but I'm going to bring back another one of our favorite <laughs> uh, features on the show. So hit it. Ave mus papa. Time for pops up. Okay, I'm going to do a quick search. You said 322 is also an applicable number? Yep. Okay, I ain't got shit for that. Well, I have something. You do? For what? Which year? For 321. Oh, yeah, go for it. Well, it's basically just who the Pope was. Okay, that works. Would you guys care to guess uh, the name of the... It was the first of this name to come up in papacy in 321. Uh, I think it's a name that we've had before. I'm pretty sure we've talked about... Pope Corn Pie the first? (laughs) Uh, Corn Custard the first? Three what? 321... Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, we said we've had the name before. I'm pretty sure. I say Pius. <laughs> it rules out Pope Seymour. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a guess. I'm cl- clueless on that. Pope Sylvester the First. Oh, okay. Pretty sure we've had him. Um. Let's see here. Well, we've had another Sylvester. How many Sylvester Popes were there? Ooh, that's a good question. I think uh, we need it. It's, think... We're overdue for another Pope Sylvester, I think. That's a good name. It's a I'm good name. I'm thinking yeah. there's, there's got to be less than 10 throughout all the years. Okay. I don't know for sure. Um, biggest thing that stands out is he, uh, he was the Pope during the Council of Nicaea, where the Nicaean Creed was formulated. Uh, oh, man, I remember the name of that, but I don't remember how it went. It's it's very similar to the Apostles' Creed, and it's just it. I get tripped up all the time because they're they're similar. But uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. I, I for whatever reason I don't see his birth name. I guess maybe his name was Sylvester. Maybe this was this was during that time period. Pope where, Robert Sylvester. <laughs> yeah, I don't there's, know. There's old paintings of him urinating on the... Uh, oh. Whatever. <laughs> I can't think of what, what you call the uh, audience. What do you mean the audience? I don't know. What, what do you call them? Not constituents. What's the right word for who would be in attendance at a mass? Yeah, Nick. Do you know that? Clergy. The congregation. Congregation. congregation there that's it is. It. Yep. Urinating well, on the congregation. Well, that's old what... paintings. <laughs> <laughs> old things. <laughs> yeah, old, Waiting well. for one to come up on Antiques Roadshow yeah. and see what it's valued at. A an, an original Robert Sylvester. Yeah. Yeah. Old painting of him urinating on the congregation. <laughs> yep. I can't tell you how happy I am that you've brought this today. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about it. Yeah. Mm. Would you guys? Do you guys ever suspect you have something that would do well on that uh, show? I have nothing of yeah, value. I, I have nothing that would qualify. I don't think. I have nothing that's more than a couple hundred dollars, which wouldn't get me anywhere on a show like that. What about you, Nick? What do you got in the house? <laughs> I, probably nothing, but, yeah. you know, what if uh, 
what if just some sort of like a little toy or like a little, I don't know, little Christmas ornament or something, you know, whatever. Oh, wow. wow. This is a super rare thing. That Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Probably not, though. Chances are. It's well, do you have old effect. stuff? I mean, that's really what it is. Nothing you got at Target is going to blow them away. Right. You Nothing know? that said collector's edition on it <laughs> is going to. It's actually a collector's edition. <laughs> Limited edition. You know, red red splatter vinyl. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that doesn't get them going. No, on. I guess not. <laughs> but look. Yeah, but I, I paid extra for they this. Slap. They slap collector's edition on a box of fucking game laundry <laughs> detergent capsules nowadays yeah. means nothing less than nothing <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah let me let me just answer your question nick you have nothing yeah. of value in your I, I believe it the only way you have anything is if you got something from a grandparent or something but if it's just anything you've accumulated in yeah. your lifetime that was produced in your lifetime i'm sure it's right. worth nothing and when i say nothing um, we'll stick it to the few hundred dollars thing right i mean even, right. even that's generous yeah exactly. exactly yeah exactly yeah uh, so what did you pick 321 oh i forgot what we were doing i just started zoning out i was gonna get up and walk out <laughs> All right, guys. I'll was see it ya. only on there once? I was on there twice. Oh, 321, my. 322. Okay. Um, I think I know the title without looking of the album. Oh, okay. That's kind of a clue, I guess. Just the fact that and it's somewhat you know it well known. enough. It's not obscure. And, yeah. You know, one of these landmines that Nick often steps on. So it's true. That this could be fun. But it may not. <laughs> but usually but isn't. It, Nick's a gambler. Not in the traditional sense, but he gambles here. All right. So um, let's turn the microphone over to Chris Jericho. All right, Harold. This one's called Rise. Off of Six. Oh, my. By the band. Extreme. Okay. Oh, oh. oh okay. Yeah. I've made uh, remarks about this song already. Mm. <laughs> you have? Not not great remarks either oh, good. On, this, on this podcast. Well, I've made disparaging remarks that. about this song, but... I don't recall that. Yeah, I have. Well, let me tell you what we've got here. This is on the list twice, as I mentioned. First time is from Mike Medina who's joining us today on our Patreon live stream Hello, for the first Mike. time. Hey, Mike. For the first time. Funky, first time. cold Medina. Mm, that's right. Of course. <laughs> he's sure he's been called that dozens of times, if not hundreds of times in his life. Mm-hmm. Not a bad thing. No, it's, oh. it's a good thing to be called. Uh, so he says, wow, Nuno Betancourt just walked back into the studio after 15 years and just threw down the gauntlet, assuming it was out of disgust about Slipknot, and announced, you want to play in Drop D? I'll show you Punk's Drop D. Ferocious track. So, there okay. you go. Very nice. And then Mark Givitz. Anybody? Yeah, I know Mark. Okay. I didn't mean it that way. I thought you were just going to make it. I was uh, thinking, <laughs> hey, since we made a, a cold so what Medina. Do you think? What so. do you think? Is this a real guy? Anybody? <laughs> not, not, Anybody? Not to, not to be confused with Mark, take it <laughs> away. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's, I was waiting for some kind of joke. Yeah, that had go. to happen. Okay. That's a, that's a softball. <laughs> yeah. It had to happen. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Mark says, hard rocking song for Extreme's latest album, Six. 2023 that's from this year nuno betancourt is really cooking on this track check out the solo the amount of talent in this band is ridiculous gary sharon on vocals nuno on guitar pat badger on bass and, mm-hmm. and kevin hold on let me uh cross my eyes and try to read this one <laughs> this is figurito figurito i don't know kevin figurito hope i said it right well the kevin Fri- the frito lay people do i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> They're lining up endorsement deals with yeah. him. <laughs> Dorito. Well, hey, Michael Bublé got the bubbly endorsement. It made perfect sense. That's I mean, true. let's do come this. Come out with flame and hot figuritos <laughs> <laughs> flying off the shelves in certain communities. Yep. Mm. Yep, yep. Okay. And so. he's and he's the uh only non original member. Correct. correct. Yes. The figurito? Yeah. Okay. Who was the original drummer? Oh if damn you don't it, I it used doesn't to matter. Know this. I, I was used just trying to, to think I used if. to know this. Yeah. So 
When was uh, that Metallica episode we did with their newest song at the time? Was that 2023 or was that 2022? No, that, I think that was uh, a year ago. Yeah. Okay, really? so this would My be goodness. so this would be the newest song on Pot of Thunder. Probably. Because yeah. it came out, I believe, in yeah, March. Yeah, th- I'd say this is probably newer than the Metallica one. Yeah. yeah. So this was their uh, hot return to form after I don't know how many years. What did I say, 15? It's, it's interesting because it's not like they've been in completely inactive. No, I don't have I mean, they, they, they haven't had an album since 08, so it's been a while. But they're, they're not like one of those bands where like after Rest in Peace came out, they stopped. Mm-hmm. I think you know they they had come back and and done a little bit here and there. Okay, but this this uh, reemergence really took a lot of people by storm. I guess it's just the right time. I think it was the right time where people were looking for something like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People want a guitar hero. Yeah, and there are they are out there, but they want like just they want one that's a a level. Mm-hmm. Who's who? Who are these people? People want that. It's news to me. <laughs> well, I guess there are. Well, it's probably the who people do. who already. It, it's the people who wanted it in the nineties. Yeah, it's they the same still people. want it. <laughs> it right. might not be new people. I'm not right. sure. Well, the, he's Nuno has been a guitar hero for that time. He never really <laughs> went away. I never mean, went he's... away, but just this is this is a reemergence for him and the band. Like they're getting sure. more attention than they have in a long time. Yeah, and Absolutely. it's you know old school. You know. Uh, Harkening back to you know their original sound and you know it, it definitely got a favorable reception for most people yeah. when it came out because yeah people are people are star- uh the people who are into this kind of rock are starving for newer uh, examples of it even though it's coming from a legacy band but uh, yeah it's uh, pretty well received so. You know, wasn't they didn't fall on their face by any stretch of the imagination, and did the tour with Living Color, which I probably mm. should have gone to that because it was right down the street at the Hard Rock and mm. Gary, and uh, but uh, yeah, I just didn't pull the trigger on that ticket. But that would have been a, a good evening of guitar playing to see. Yeah, when you go on to Apple Music, there's usually a little blurb or a couple paragraphs depending on whoever writes it or whatever to you know hype up the album usually very colorful and flowery and uh, hmm. adjective adjective filled yeah um this one's very brief i've never seen one quite like this it just says hard rocking anthems lovely ballads and unreal fretwork from nuno not even a last name Usually it like finds a way to write every guy's name and what they're bringing to the table oh, okay. and this compared to their previous works. So I feel like Nuno just kind of typed this out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some unreal fret work from Nuno. If I say it in third person, they won't know it's me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So well, But hey, maybe that's what this is. I've only heard this song and I think I maybe twice maybe once i know i watched the video i don't know, remember if i listened to the song on its own once and watched the video once but yeah you never heard um oh gosh i can't think of the name of it the one that uh, hashtag rebel no banshee no what was the one that had a, has a video as well the other side of the rainbow Small yeah, town, I beautiful. A, I think it's other side of the rainbow. It's a bit, okay. it, it's a I bit, yeah, bit more melodic. You know, <clears throat> that one um, missed. That one missed me. I didn't know they had a second single. There's a video, a video, yeah. This is the one, Nick. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I think you watched a fan video. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I, bands come out with videos still. It's or, or again. Here's rather. to the losers. That's the name of a song. Beautiful girls. Hmm. Hurricane? Was it Hurricane? No, I think it was. Because Hurricane has a video on here. That's why I asked. Is it? I thought it was the other side of the rainbow had a video. It does. Well, they made a lot of videos. A lot of bands are doing why are they that. Made, that's, they that's made what I'm six saying. videos that's for this. That's what I'm saying. Like, doesn't Metallica have a video for every song on their new album? What are they, the Wiggles? Who needs, <laughs> who needs a video for every the, song? The Wiggles have reshaped <laughs> the game. Apparently. My goodness. I didn't know that. <laughs> video for every song hey man genre doesn't matter 
I, uh, the older I get, the more I, I, but I'm our, realizing but, this. But are, are, are some like some of the newer videos I've seen are just like seem to be like AI generated lyric there videos. Is that, yeah. there's, oh, that's, that, that, there's a lot of that going on. It qualifies technically as a video, but just something that will be on YouTube in case you want to stumble upon it. There basically is or, the reason yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, and and it's you know like have some stock performance footage or whatever but the, like common like when i and the times when i actually go into a blabbermouth uh article and they've got the latest video from a band more times than not it looks like just a ai graphics with lyrics and you know something like that so hmm. but I, I i remember seeing the video for this song and it's you know it was a pro shot uh performance video so mm -hmm. yeah yep and it just has a gorilla on the cover yeah with red eyes and uh what oh Sorry. hey hey i want to watch the video and, uh, <laughs> apparently i don't know how interesting this bit of information is but um the gorilla's name is pecanuga which is uh, the first two letters of each band member's names put together. That's not the gorilla's name. <laughs> you can't just call a gorilla a new name. They gave the gorilla a name. You can't just say... If you put it on your album cover, you can name it. I don't, think, new guy. I don't think that's how it works. What's, okay, who names the gorilla if not if not the members of Extreme? Well, is, it a, <laughs> is it a real gorilla or is it an you artistic have, rendering? It looks gorilla. like a real gorilla to me. I'm thinking this gorilla was named at birth. It was probably on the news. Guess what? Born at the San Diego Gar Zoo. Garden of Eden, Adam named the animals. <laughs> now, <laughs> now Nuno names now the Now Extreme names the animals. Okay. Pacanuga? Pacanuga. That's not real. I'm not accepting that. That's a disgrace to gorillas <laughs> around the world. And he's, he's offended I'm, on behalf I'm, of them. I'm standing up for gorillas. That's why, not... why do you not think that uh, that's a good name for this gorilla? Because its its mother didn't choose it. <laughs> well, no, because it's big news when a zoo gets a new gorilla and they put it on TV and say baby whatever was born today. That's true. Yeah. You can't just take a picture of a gorilla and say, oh yeah, its name is <laughs> Pacanuga now. Let's see. Chris is Chris is looking to see if this is a Pacanuga. Pacanuga. Is Andy, this their Eddie? Is there a guy like the, in a gorilla suit It sounds like some of the now? sounds Andy was making last week while he couldn't make the show. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm borderline close to doing it again. Keep making me laugh. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's an actual gorilla. <laughs> I think that's just a, <laughs> an artistic think, rendering think, of a gorilla. Well, and then I mean, they're going to establish a mascot, like Andy said. And, uh, well, clearly the red eyes are... You know, there's artistic liberties being taken there. But. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm yeah. just, it, it's it's a it's a you know it, any any artist or AI could have come up with that. So I don't think a an actual gorilla was given a new name by extreme <laughs> against its will or without its permission. That's what I'm hearing. Without the family permission, you know. Although, imagine the publicity. Well, they that's probably what they're hoping that. for, and no one caught on to it until today. Well, we bl we blew the lid off that sucker. Yeah, we did. Pack a new gun. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Can't yeah, get over my this. Goodness. What's this gorilla's real name? <laughs> Pecanuga. They went to the courthouse. No one drew it. I mean, someone just took a stock image and then oh, yeah. manipulated someone, someone it a little bit. Right, but if the gorilla. gorilla is posing for stock photos, it gives up a lot of its rights to its own <laughs> likeness, and it, it probably includes having its name changed. It's probably it's gorilla it, slavery. Is it what probably we're about. signed some royalty-free agreement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody can use exactly, it. and then didn't read the fine print and it's, said your name can be changed at any time. It's it, it's a wonderful life in Pacanuga. Fall under the same yeah, situation. Yeah, it took a one-time lump sum payment, and <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you have no rights to anything. It's almost like a <laughs> Fogarty uh, situation. Oh, they got totally hosed by the people who cut up yeah. that big fat check. And I, every giant uh, songwriter, singer songwriter, is selling their catalog right now. Mm. John Fogarty's buying his back. It's the only one, huh? Yeah. That's true. No, well, he's going to buy it back to sell it eventually. Well, I, he did buy it back, but yeah, now's not the time to be buying that back. 
Well, it's a poor I mean, investment. Unless he can flip it, but I think it's, oh, he it's can a, flip it. It's a matter me. of principle, I think. For yeah, him. yeah, but when 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 he gets closer to death's door, he's going to want to cash that out. That's what everybody else is doing. Yeah, even Pakanuga. <laughs> yeah. He tr- he gave away his his rights for one papaya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. P- Pacanuga's got nothing. <laughs> this poor guy. Oh man, Pacanuga's uh, with a got a steel <laughs> cup in the street asking for change. Start a GoFundMe for him. And gambled away the money he got for the one time royalty to be on the Extreme Six cover. Yeah, now well. he's regretting it. I wish we had more time to do research here. Cautionary tale, the Pacanuga <laughs> situation. A lifetime movie. I can't wait to watch that. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, then there'll be a Pacanuga Christmas at uh, Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> can't help themselves. Pacanuma, Pacanuga goes home for yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well... Are you guys ready to get into this? Uh, I, yeah. I wonder if our listeners are ready for this. I think they've all start. left. Oh, yeah. uh, well. Well, they lost interest with the gorilla talk. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, we went too deep on the Pacanuga. Oh, yeah, well. All right. Well, let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with Rise, track one from the 2023 Extreme album called Six. <laughs> kind of got right to it huh nah they didn't waste a lot of time no. on the first song oh it is this is the opening track is it not yeah, it is okay people don't really do that thing anymore i feel like that was i don't know kind of went out of style in the last 10 or 15 years maybe 20 years where there's some uh like soundscape thing at the beginning of the album that you have to sit through in order to Which, get to the you know thank goodness yeah, i think they're realizing that people's attention spans are not getting longer as time goes on yeah where it's like a some thing that's fading up with traffic sounds and samples of something you know and it's yeah 90 seconds of whatever (laughs) yeah that's (coughs) like but we've talked about that many times that's fun the first time yeah absolutely and then you don't want it the rest of the time and maybe you're okay with it to open a concert before the band you know before the curtain drops yeah that's cool but um yeah, I mean, we got just kind of, uh, we were talking about Metallica. I could see Metallica having this sort of uh, this sort of riff, mm. just kind of a, a two-note back-and-forth kind of thing like this. Mm-hmm. I could see Metallica post-load mm-hmm. having something like this going on. Um, I, I was, I'm pretty sure the bass didn't kick in until Gary Sharon kicked in as well. Hmm. Because it sounded like there was something, something not there, and then boom, everything was everything there came up at yeah. the same time. Yeah, and I mean, we only we only heard a little bit, but he sounds like he did what thirty plus years ago. Yeah, so far. Yeah, and it actually it reminded me a little bit of. Uh, and I'm trying to pinpoint the song as like I'm blanking on it but a, a Velvet Revolver song with Wyland me obviously too. on vocals it's mm-hmm. giving me a, a flashback to that I want to say it's something off the first album maybe some of the some of the uh, people in uh, in the watch along or the lurker access will know the title of the song it's the one that goes cocaine alcohol oh, um, is that dirty little thing or no that's not it don't think so it's off the first album i, I just can't blank uh, blanking on what the title is but uh that's what the the vocal and the uh sort of groove of the song is giving me a uh, velvet revolver vibes right now yeah I hear that too. Yeah, me too. Which is not a bad thing for me. So yeah, I didn't want to say because I didn't want Nick to throw something at the back of my head, <laughs> facing away from him. I mean, 
mean, and talking about Velvet Revolver, this verse is at least as the rhythm and sort of the the notes that are being sung and mm-hmm. the speed, very Wyland esque. Something yeah. you would do, and then with this now with the second uh, harmony voice, just singing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Another thing that yeah, it, it, very Wyland esque. I wonder how. Uh, <clears throat> how influenced uh, Gary Sharon would have been by by Scott Weiland. Hmm. Um, Was the song superhuman? It is superhuman. Okay. What what confused me is I'm that confusing. there's a video on here for Superhuman, but it's got the Libertad album cover as the video still. That oh. confused me. But yeah, it's Superhuman is the song that is this sounds similar to. Okay. What's he talking about? I've, when I watched the video, I didn't. Uh, did nothing lyrically jumped out at me. With, for with better the extreme or for, song, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I for don't better know. or for I worse, pulled up the lyrics to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is he talking about gorillas at all? Possibly. <laughs> He's talking about ripping off gorillas, stealing their names, <laughs> stealing their identities. Man. <laughs> Uh, kind of similar to the plight of the Native American, just having their homeland stolen from them, the local gorillas having names taken from them. It's kind of like me having my ancestry taken away exactly. by science. Exactly. It's all connecting here. What's the name of the gorilla again? T- Pacanuga. Pacanuga. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> All right, let me tell you what we've got yeah, so far. Ly- lyrically. And, and if it's going in a direction that we feel like we'd like to pursue, we can continue or we'll just drop it. We'll see. It says, look around, look around you. Uh, where'd it go? Little town lost and found where we found you. If you stay, your decay will define you. Oh, come along, come along, come and join us. Take a little walk in the middle of the madness. Get your mind and your rhyme and your reason blown. <clears throat> Sounds more like stream of consciousness lyrics to me. I don't know if there's yeah, a cohesive theme here. And there are a couple of moments there where I'm getting a hint of like your basic rock and roll kind of we're an awesome band. Here we are. Enjoy little, the show. Uh, Self promotion, yeah. puffery. Yeah, there. there, there's a bit of that it, that I'm detecting in a couple of lines. Well, that's you know, as Nick's favorite word, which I'm uh, always a fan of when he uses it. That's a common trope in uh, rock music. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with going back to that. Well, the next lyric is "Looky here, we ripped off this monkey." <laughs> So, ah, the comment I made before when this song came out was, I really don't like the chorus, mm-hmm. and I still really don't like what's happening in the chorus. Just not my cup of tea. Um, that's my only complaint. Mm-hmm. The uh uh uh. It's up. just something about yeah. It's um. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure what. Uh, what decade it's it's most uh indicative of to have this type of chorus like 2010 2010 yeah i mean it's like it's like that like that chanting kind of chorus that would get the whole crowd involved at like a festival or might even spill over to a sporting event somehow well Mm -hmm. it's really and I'm not an expert on this particular group i know we've talked about them not terribly flatteringly but uh, it sounds to me like something like if you went to an Imagine Dragons show, hmm. there would be some sort of chorus like this. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, I, that's definitely, Imagine Dragons are it's rock music for people who really don't like rock music and they, they think they like rock music. It's just, I don't even know what to call it. But yeah, it's just 
songs written and and choruses crafted to create these huge sing-alongs that uh will get a stadium full of people involved and might possibly get you some licensing residuals when it's used at a sporting event or something you know mm-hmm. people trying to do the uh you know the seven nation army type chant that will get adopted by uh sporting uh teams and uh, and and crowds around the world and you'll you'll get some residual money from that but it it does seem kind of like forced to me when you hear that obvious chant sing along or chant along chorus so kind of with you on that one it could be uh just because it's the exact same word but there was a fallout boy song that said light them up yeah but it would be like up 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 right kind of thing that i remember from i had to edit some video with some light it was like a, a race where people are wearing glow things and that's the song they wanted it <laughs> so i had to listen to it like 50 times until i finished this video a decade and now, ago and now you know it yeah forever yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. when you work on a project mm-hmm. it's got a song in it yep. yep but yeah that reminds me of that so so do you like the chorus Mm. Or you're not sure yet? Mm. Yeah, let me hear the rest of it. Yeah, I'm not wild about it, to be honest with you. And and, and I'm kind of tipping my hand here before we get halfway through. But people were raving about this song. Mm -hmm. And I think mainly it's because, like you said earlier, they're just starved for this kind of rock music again. Mm -hmm. That anything resembling what they've been longing for, they're just going to gush over it. And when I heard it, and I'll, I'll, I'll... it, this also applies to the solo, which is borderline sacrilege. But uh, it, 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 I mean, I, it, it's rocking, and I know the guys in the band are great, and I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm fine with extreme. I mean, uh, I, I've got no issues with them. I've talk, we've done a couple episodes about them. I've spoken about my history with the band, and I mean, uh, I never got head over heels into them but uh, i respect them obviously and they put on some put out some great stuff mm-hmm. i was not bowled over by this like everybody else seemed to be well i think there might be <clears throat> there might be an element of that where like you were saying people are so starved for it that it could even have it could be extreme and even have these very sort of, I mean, I guess I'm going to say the word modern, sort of trendy modern sorts of sounds going on. All right. Um, even though probably 20 years ago is when the heyday of this type of, this type of song was happening. Um, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I think it's got, it might have to do with that. And yeah, the, the, I think from what I've heard and what I've read, the reason people love this song is the I'll just say the instrumental passage we haven't gotten to yet. Oh, right, correct. That's a big part of it. But I, again, the drop D riff, the fact that it's a uh, '80s slash '90s band that's coming back in 2023 with something that sounds pretty similar to what they did in their heyday, but it's still also sounding contemporary. I think that got people excited. Um, so I think it's more than just the solo, but yeah, people were freaking out about that too. So we'll oh get yeah, to it. I mean this this solo is yeah. Well, yeah, we will get to it, but yeah, huge, huge reception. Yeah, and the guitar the nerd community it was almost uh, you know exclusively uh, praised. I didn't see any comments to the contrary, but you're about to hear some as this episode uh, meanders on. Interesting comment from Mike Medina in our chat. He says, it's that typical dissonance that Extreme uses to almost sabotage their songs. Dissonance? Yeah. Meaning 
Just like, like hmm. is that Sonically? section? Yeah, like that section in the chorus. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, well, hmm. I guess I mean there was some dissonance, but it was just it's really low register dissonance. So it's just it's just crunch, really, from what I'm hearing. Yeah, I didn't really pick up on that. I it just it's again, it sounds it sounds like extreme, a little more contemporary production. So. <clears throat> Which is good. I mean, you don't want to be completely retro, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on board with the bands that are coming out that are purposely trying to sound like they were recorded in the mid '80s. Mm. Yeah, but they're they're, they're newer bands. Yeah, right? like the Dirty Honeys and the, any other I mean, bands. And, and you there, well, there are so many. Um, metal bands that are they're not big right um, but there's so many like new wave of british heavy metal band mm. sounding bands that are coming out right yeah, and they sound that. like they're from the they sound like it was recorded in the 80s yeah and i think that's great that people are unapologetically going for that and i i i, lo- I get it why people want to bring in the the low crunchiness of the more contemporary sound. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, for my taste, I, it doesn't have to be exactly, it sounds like, you know, extreme in the nineties or something like that. But there, there, there's something to it where it's like, all right, the new metal thing happened. The drop D new metal thing happened a while ago. And that's kind of what a lot of these eighties bands are are still doing they're still adopting that and putting that into their newer stuff in 2020 whatever right so that's that to me is a little weird because it's i don't know how contemporary it is anymore Hmm. but i i mean music has progressed i think so slowly since the 90s yeah that there's not there hasn't been there haven't been very many huge developments that have been that no that's true so it it feels like oh this is contemporary but it's it's really not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I th- again, I think the fact that they're a legacy band, they've been around for 30 years, I think it, this sounds different enough from their... Similar yeah. enough to their heyday music where people are totally on board with it, who've been on board with them for years. But it's also contemporary sounding to the fact that, you know, oh, these, these guys can still sound relevant. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... There's a hint of it there, but I I, see, I totally get what you're saying. Take a bow, take a bow to the new king. Ever cool is a fool, never lasting. Want it dead or alive, the king must die. Tick tock, tick tock, you're a time bomb. What do you guys think of that um, vocal tone where it's kind of like he's getting a swirly while he's singing? <laughs> Like, like distorted and murky. It's kind of, yeah. It's got like a little bit, mm, a little bit of like distance <clears throat> from it, almost a little echoey. But it's it's not a, I don't know what you would call it. It's not like uh, mm, like an extremely clear. It's, you're really vocal. just you're hearing a lot of the room. You're, yeah, you're hearing a lot of the room. Um, I think it sounds fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm good I think with it works. It. I th- it works for this song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't have an issue with it. Yeah, it didn't even really occur to me that it would, you know, be objectionable at all. No, oh, I'm burning. until I'm, now. It burns me up. Until now, I'm gonna to spit when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say defecated? He did. That's how I thought he said, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Eat you up, spit you out, defecated. Well, that's that's the probably the first song with the word defecate that we've ever listened to. <laughs> Surprisingly. Yeah. One of my uh, favorite words, by the way. <laughs> but if you're spitting it out, is there much left to defecate would be my question. I mean, he's trying to get it out any way he can in a hurry, I guess. Well, psyllium husks can help with that. So, uh, Pacanuga brand yeah. psyllium husk. 
Now you see, this is how the magic happens. <laughs> you put a gorilla on a c- container of psyllium husks, that shit will fly off the shelf. See, and, that, and that gives the customer, that uh, that injects a, an air of confidence. When, exactly. Once, once tagline, you're... shit like a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't go for that? That's Pack of news, uh, psyllium husks, <laughs> shit like a gorilla. It comes in like a... <laughs> comes in like a tobacco package yeah. like uh yeah so you could take it on the go yeah like you can a, like always a, have have it with you like a big league chew package yeah, exactly like you, the, the, exactly or a copenhagen <laughs> yeah it's not too far off of what they do in the like if you go into gnc to get some kind of supplement oh absolutely yeah they would put the same gorilla picture on oh the, sure the, a tub of yeah. protein powder oh, absolutely they would yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, anything it could be it doesn't matter i'm surprised that every package in gnc <laughs> does, doesn't have a gorilla on it right it's probably just gnc's logo doesn't yeah, have a yeah. gorilla yeah. gorilla nutrition center <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know yeah <clears throat> Gorillas that it's like America. Just you, you drop the the the, the word and, and and create that image in certain situations. Just yeah, it's a, a guaranteed sales. Yeah, that that audience eats it up. They can't get enough gorillas. <laughs> So the other thing I wanted to say, I should have stopped it before the guitar solo, but then the solo started. I'm like, okay, we should listen to this. But when he was doing that call and response with Sharon and he was doing like those octaves. The bag it, it, tag it thing. Yeah, yeah right. Yep. Those, those octaves are something that's uh, a little more common in modern music. You hear it a lot. Yeah, you know, that's like true. shadowing the, vo- the vocal lines. Yeah. So that's another contemporary kind of uh, oh, west montgomery <laughs> well that i know that's that, way back yeah that was his like, thing but anyway but yeah. you, you know you hear yeah, that a lot in for pop sure. punk or whatever you want to say you know it's pretty prevalent nowadays a lot of people latch on to that so then i was listening the first half of the solo i i liked it better this time than the first time i heard it i thought i was just paying more attention to it and it was pretty great because nobody's really playing like that anymore and certainly no nobody of the younger generation is really playing like that anymore that i'm aware of so for nuno to come back and lay that out there is pretty cool but when you get halfway through and he just starts doing the fretboard gymnastics, that's where it kind of lost me. It doesn't really see, serve the song at that point. It's just more of like the, oh, here's what I can do on the guitar and look how awesome I am, which he's one of the absolute five greatest guitar players on the planet, no question about it. But it just seemed like that was an exercise and tapping or partial harmonics or whatever he was doing and it didn't really serve the song to me it didn't serve the song but 
I don't think at that point it was trying to. I don't think it even really needed to. Um, and in my, for me personally, it's it was a nice break from the sort of the really gloomy vibe of most of the song that we'd heard up to that point. And <clears throat> yeah, him doing that sort of uh, kind of calling back to some of the speed and some of the, the the way he was playing on like Flight of the Bumblebee or something like that. Right. Was right. kind of it, it for me. Yeah. It it kind of it goes out of what the rest of the song was but i kind of like that it did i i kind of plus it's extreme and they've carved that out yeah you know that that that's within the realm of possibility in one of their songs so i think i think it does work within the context of the band sure it takes you out of the song but i kind of like that it did yeah i'm 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 the opposite i i it kind of lost me halfway through um so I don't know. What'd you think, Andy? Any thoughts on that from the non guitar playing uh standpoint? Yeah, you know, I don't know a ton of extreme, but I know like Nick said Flight of the Bumblebee, I've heard their take on that and then play with me most famous from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Mm-hmm. And it's that scene where it's that uh section with a very similar uh I don't know what you even call that, that like super fast picking where it's where the drop where the very, music drops out pretty much and there's just much, some syncopated drum yeah. hits that go with it and he's just picking extremely fast yeah where it's very classical sounding yeah and that's this is like i'm gonna do a different version of that which is kind of you know yeah. i guess it's welcome as like a tip of the cap to that but yeah if you're trying to compose something that works with the rest of the song it's not what that is, but this is like, hey, this is going to be our single, so let's. I'll do some of that extreme stuff that everybody remembers, and then I'll do, you know, this new song we have in the same song, right? <laughs> And at least based on the chorus, it's become pretty apparent what the song is about. Mm-hmm. That, it, I guess, uh, uh, so many celebrities, I'm trying to pick one. I'll just say Anna Nicole Smith. We could say it's about <laughs> Anna Nicole Smith, that the, the public will lift you up and then they mm. love to see you fall and tear you down. Yeah. Okay. I had a, a much worse take on it than I'll leave in my mind. I thought where you were going with it. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, you I'm think just trying to think of one of the many celebrities who this has happened well, to. Well, it's it's a it's a long list. Yeah, for mm. a long time. So you think that's what's going on here? The chorus sounds uh, it almost uh, in, yeah. indisputably. That's what. Watch that's, you rise, watch you fall. Okay. Yeah. The verse, I still couldn't really make heads or tails out of eat you up and shit you out. <laughs> I, I guess later. so. Yeah, I guess I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm oh. gonna go ahead and put my put my uh, chips on. I think on it's that plausible. Theory. It makes sense. That's it. Four minutes and 35 seconds. Rise. So that's it. Mm. Interesting. Thinking about my vote here. 
I believe you're the one who has to vote first. Yeah, right? if, uh, that's if we right. go with the traditional. Well, I'm going to give it a sweet surrender. It's sweet surrender. Hell yes. It's not typically what I'm into. I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time listening to it again. But I think it's nice for them, and I'm happy for them and their fans that this is uh, something that came out in 2023. So it's a triumph and a celebration of this type of music, and if that's what you're into, yay for everybody. I think it's good. So who's next? I'll go next. Yeah? I'll give it a Sweet Surrender as well. It's Sweet Surrender! In spite of the fact that I just really just can't can't come around to that chorus after however many months the song's been out, just can't do it. Um, that uh, other side of the rainbow song, like yeah, like I like that one. Okay, that one's you like that one better. It's a, I mean, that one's a little more. That one's not like it doesn't have the big crunchy drop D kind of thing mm-hmm. happening with it. And just uh, for me, that that just sort of loses me um, after a while. But I mean, they're they're extreme, and they do different uh, sounding songs. You know, that's that's what they do. And for extreme to have a song that sounds like this, it I mean, it makes sense because because they have carved that out for themselves a mm-hmm. long time ago. That that their boundaries are not as narrow as a lot of other bands, and that's great. Um, I thought, yeah, like solo it's it's that's the reason in my opinion that people are freaking out over it and sharon sounds as good as he ever has interesting so you think if the solo was just like a quarter of that length and more tame that no one would care or people wouldn't be talking about the song as much i don't think they would be talking about it as much Mm -hmm. um i as as far as the song itself goes it wouldn't really affect it that much but <clears throat> it's i mean let's face it you you've got you, i mean the ba- the whole band obviously great band but you've got the standout guitar player yeah. so you're going to showcase them mm-hmm. and it makes perfect sense that's what you're going to do um but i don't think it's really uh i don't think it's really the <sighs> the song itself that's getting as like people freaking out i don't think they'd be freaking out they'd be like hey man that's pretty cool that extreme song not like whoa did you hear the extreme song because they're that's almost like code for the nuno solo yeah although i'm gonna say like i sharon sounds fantastic oh yeah i mean his he's not from what i can tell he hasn't lost a step at all no and he keeps himself in shape and does all the clearly does all the right things to maintain his uh, performance level yeah. as as has the rest of them. So I mean, you know, uh, hats off to him for sure. I mean, I I agree with that absolutely. Chris, uh, I'm going to give it a sweet surrender as well. It's sweet surrender. I mean, I wasn't blown away by it like everybody else was, and I, I think uh, I, I could have done without the second half of that solo, and it would have been totally fine with me. Um, but, you know, it rocks, and it, it would be a little disingenuous of me to say I love a couple of last ep- rock episode we did before September started. It was, a, what, the Slither episode, I believe. Mm. And, you know, I... I uh, laid it out there how much I loved uh, Velvet Revolver it would be a little bit disingenuous of me to turn around and say a song that kind of reminds me of them I didn't like I mean it rocks it's got a good groove I mean the chorus thing with the, the sing along part is it's it's, it's I, I do have a minor issue with that but I like the groove of it I like how they like throttled it down for the chorus and uh and the groove is nice and obviously the playing is great and and i agree with nick uh the, the vocals are super strong and you know you, you gotta tip your cap to the guys like that who just you know 30 35 years into their career they're um 
you know, in shape, looking good, playing good, sounding good. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. uh, it, you got to give them their props for that. Just, uh, I, I, I wasn't, um, you know, as over the moon about it as a lot of rock nerds and guitar nerds and people, you know, of my age group have been starving for this kind of music. And, uh, and so I wasn't that giddy about it, but, uh, I still liked it. There's nothing, nothing I can think of not to like it about it to the point where I would kick it in the crotch here. So hmm. did either of you guys watch the, uh, Rick Beato, um, interview with Nuno did not no uh, I recommend it I recommend it to everybody it was like Just whoever you meet on <clears throat> the street you recommend it <laughs> like two and a half hours or something if I remember correctly and but Nuno is is it face to face or is it yeah, a zoom thing no, it's face, face, to face to face and, and Nuno is a uh, an exceedingly uh, entertaining interview so I, I never would have guessed that I know you told me this once before but yeah when you told me that I didn't know enough about his personality. I would think he would be kind of uh, an understated, quiet man. No, in no, an he's, a, he's a chatterbox. Hmm. Yeah, and he's got. He had <clears throat> a certain opinion got uh, went viral. That he what did he he criticize somebody or vice versa or he responded to that. And yeah, he to, he had to walk back his comments. I can't think of what it was. Um, but. he was he was talking about slash. Oh, that's right, and, and the, the, he couldn't hack the Rihanna gig, wasn't that? I it? think it was something like that. Rihanna, yeah. Rihanna, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, that. I, I'm not super familiar with Beato stuff, but it's it's almost like if you're a rock star or anybody famous and you're being interviewed, it's like how how do you not go into an interview being like? Okay, where's the setup for me to say something that's going to go viral here? <laughs> yeah. It's like the whole fucking thing seems like it's trying to set out these landmines for you to say something that's going to go viral and it all be traced back to this per- particular interview. And I don't know. It's a tough environment to actually sit down and, 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 be interviewed and give a good interview anymore but I, i've heard good things about him no, i've seen a few of his videos where he breaks down songs and it's i mean he knows his shit obviously yeah. and i'm not no, he's... I'm not saying he did that intentionally but there are a lot of if not the majority of interviews out there are just trying to set you up for to make an incendiary comment i wouldn't i wouldn't say that viral. that's that that's beato style though there there are yeah there are a lot where you can you can tell there are a lot of interviews that people get where the questions are definitely trying to lead them in a direction right. if not just straight up asking like hey what's up with this guy do you have any comments yeah. but no be uh, i recommend anybody out there who uh, who hasn't seen it good good interview um yeah, and I saw he sat down with Hammett recently, and that's I mean these these are long interviews, like Nick said, two two and a half hours, and you know he's he's definitely on the A list of like rock interviewers now, and as uh, he should be. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I I, I don't I, I I don't really have the time or the attention span to sit down and watch a two and a half hour interview with anybody anymore, but uh, yeah. Um, but you know, Nuno is, he's a, like I said, he's easily top five, uh, rock guitarists on the planet, hands down. And he's just a guy, total command of the instrument. So, I mean, I, I've got nothing bad to say about him. Uh, certainly it's just, uh, just seemed like the second half of that solo to me that everybody was jumping up and down about just seemed more like just fretboard gymnastics versus doing anything to serve the song yeah well look where we found ourselves guys all right Hammond I got a question for you Paul Stanley oh. needs to know if Rise is a rock and roll boner classic as voted by not one not two but three rock and roll boners in this very room he's wondering if Kiss should ever make an album with drop D oh never mind Mm. Colin Bell's favorite Kiss release. 
Is that true? No, it's not true. I was, I was, oh, I'm, I'm being facetious. Good. He despises the elbow. Good on you, Colin. Uh, I still say half a carnival is damn There's, good. There, there are some good ones on there, I will admit. And that's that's one of the things uh, about doing this podcast. is <clears throat> You can't just dismiss an album because you hear one or two songs you don't like. You're going to hear every note of every album. <laughs> True, but so you're you're gonna you're gonna get a feel of what it's all about yeah. instead of just being able to write it off. Yeah, so. my vote's in. Nick, I'm voting along with Chris. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm agreeing with his vote. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think I know what his vote is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna vote the same way. Yeah, and I'm gonna agree with Andy's vote because I think I know what his vote's gonna be. So I think he should start the voting. Okay. And one more uh, thing that I saw in our chat that made me laugh during the song, our friend Jackie Hardigan said, this sounds like it should be in a promo for the NHL playoffs. And it probably is as <laughs> oh, far as And, and you know what? And that's another, that's a great observation that just, it's not only like, uh, like uh, what I was saying that you, you come up with a chant chorus that might be used in a, in a stadium. The licensing for like exactly what she described as a promo for a pro sports league or like on Sports Center or something like that. There's yeah. a lot of money to be made yeah. doing that. I mean, so. it, this could end up in a video game title screen. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a, that's the other thing. And it's like you, you, bands and artists are they have that in mind when they're writing stuff because I, there's money yeah. there. I would have to suspect that. I mean, it's so tailor made for that. That it had to, it had to cross their minds at least. Yeah, and it, if it, not, that was the entire goal of it, this chorus. It definitely has that that sound and energy that would ap- appeal to a your your typical customer of Gorilla Nutrition Centers. <laughs> yeah. So you know, sort of roid head gym guy. I mean, this uh, this would be a good gym workout song to get you to get you fired up. So yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going to vote first. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm giving it a soft boner. Sorry. Be <laughs> gorilla yeah, right there. Soft I mean, wiener. If you hear no that boner. sound, it's too late if you're in the jungle. Yeah, yeah you're done. <laughs> too bad. Enjoyed it, but it's not, it's not boner worthy for me. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do it either. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to put the impression out there that uh, the excitement of extreme having a triumphant return like this is lost on me because i enjoy it yeah i'm i've always always and always like i've i've never been like a huge huge fan where i owned everything but always been a fan always respected yeah same and, and loved their whole just their whole my perceived version of what their mission statement might be. Yeah, and like I, I ta- I've talked about it in previous Extreme episodes, but my general manager of the guitar center that I worked at was a f- the biggest Extreme fan I've ever known, and he would you know constantly constantly play the stuff like in the store and then like when we'd hang out afterwards he'd bust out the extreme and it'd be it'd be like uh, the playing is great, the production is fantastic. There's nothing not to like about it, but when I wasn't hanging out with him or at work, I never really felt the need to listen to any extreme or buy any extreme. Mm. So, yeah. All right. Well, if you disagree with us, we're sorry. That's just the fucking way it is. Mm. That's too bad. But there will be those that disagree and that's you know you think so hey, well, yeah. we didn't rip it apart we just weren't no. all fucking giddy about it like uh, all these starved uh, rock and guitar nerds I guess if you cut out that second half of that solo and it's just tapping gymnastics I, I might have uh, I might have voted it as a uh, as a boner wow all right well you know it is a boner Getting a message from a listener to celebrate our 10th anniversary, and this one comes to us from Doug Levy in Detroit. Oh, wow. Detroit. Pop strikes 10, must be Monday night. A decade of stupidity, but that's all right. Listen to Pound of Thunder tonight. Leave us a voice message tonight. (laughs) 
Hey Boners, this is Doug in Detroit, and I've been a Pod of Thunder listener for at least eight out of the ten years you've been doing Damn. this. I really do never miss a show. It's one of the few bright spots of my week. Uh, Chris, I love the fact that you've had some fellow Detroiters on, especially M.L. Elric. That was such a surprise, given his credentials. Uh, but I've listened to his podcast before, and I've seen him on TV, and this really is how he is. He's a great journalist, and just the fact that you had him on Pot of Thunder really worked so well. Um, so great that you had the connection to him. And speaking of that, I have somewhat of a connection to all of you. My daughter goes to college in Chicago, and whenever I visit her and I see the I-94 exit for Hammond and Munster, I instinctively yell out, Yes! <laughs> anyway, here are my favorite Pot of Thunder episodes in select categories. Best kiss episode, Dirty Living. Mm, two God, words for you. Holy shit balls. <laughs> Best Tuge episode. On Christmas, Johnny died. On Christmas, Johnny oh, died. All right. Okay. <laughs> two words for you. Michelangelo Batty. Yeah. <laughs> Best season two episode, The Osmonds, Wild Horses. Oh, man. Two words for you. Meryl Osmond. Yes. Mm -hmm. Best February episode, Moonlight Feels Right by Starbuck. Mm -hmm. Two words for you. Vibraphone solo. Big time. <laughs> there you go. Best, uh, best September episode, Alia by Donny Iris. That's, that's Two words it. for you, Donny Iris. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, best original parody song, <laughs> Hot, Hot, Hotter Than Grape. Ah. Five words for you, Marco Mendoza, Seal of Approval. <laughs> and finally, best best of episode, without a doubt, best of Caribbean Cove. Oh. Uh, two words for you, subject sucked <laughs> i have listened to that episode countless times it never gets old and it is never not funny anyway keep up the good work and i don't know bye <laughs> thank you doug it's very doug. sweet to yeah he, he got got thorough there really broke it down he did his homework <laughs> yeah thank you doug appreciate that and if you want to send a similar clip hopefully with praise and not uh uh, expletives and violence, uh, threats of violence. You can send it to. So that happened, right? Oh, it happens all the time. No, it doesn't. Pot of Thunder at yahoo.com. Yeah, you we, just talk it into your phone and send it over. We've got about, uh, what, seven <clears throat> weeks left in our 10th anniversary year. So yeah. keep them coming. We've got another one in the can. I think that's it. So uh, yeah. send yours along uh, if you'd like, and uh, we'll. we'll keep uh accepting them through the end of the year and uh we appreciate it that uh, makes it all worthwhile for me anyway so mm -hmm. all right let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the yard of questions oh, yeah. yards of questions motherfucker i give them sing away mm. <clears throat> yes chief <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh. What do we got here? Let's take a look at our pile of yards. <laughs> That's a hard one. Oh, <laughs> let's see. So many choices. How, how recent are these? Eh, within the past couple weeks. Um, let's try this. Eh, yeah, we'll try it. I think we'll try it. I hope you guys let's try. We'll have fun with this. This week's Yardo Questions comes to us from Dake Dylan Hall. I don't know what's going on here, but we have, we have Dake Dylan Hall. All right. Great actor. Yep. So Dake Dylan Hall says, we are going to make heterosexual love. Don't worry, I'm a bottom. All right, okay. Dake. Okay. Good to know. Got a, we got a live one here. Yeah, yeah. we do. 
So these three questions all go together. Um, question one. Dake may or may not been involved in the creation of that Slipknot parody we've been passing around this oh, week, yeah. <laughs> given, the, given the theme he's establishing here. So. Yeah. Question one. What is the song you play during foreplay, a.k.a. butt-chugging lube? So if you... Here's what's going on here. I'm just going to tell you all three questions at the same time, and you're going to give us all three answers, because I think that makes more sense, and that way you won't spend any of your answers on the wrong All right, question. you're the boss. So question one is your foreplay song. Question two is your during coitus song. Question three is your post-coital bong-ripping song. <laughs> what the? So what would be a... G- Wait, is that a thing you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> I... I- I didn't realize that either. Back in the day, I would have done it. Those days are over for me, but I I, I know where he's coming from. So, basically, we're looking at foreplay, in the act, and then afterglow. So what would be three good songs that could fit? Oh, goodness. Is this too hard? No, no, not for me. That's the name of my first song, actually. (laughs) (laughs) That's, That's the first one. Do you want me to go for a walk? Uh Oh man. All right, I'll go cuz I got I got my 3. Um So the, the first two could go either way, so I'm I'm going to go uh so the, the four play song would be Two Become One Spice Girls. Oh I mean, yeah. Come on now. That works. If that doesn't put you in the in the in the right mood, there's something wrong with you. And if you can't get past your aversion to pop music or whatever you, whatever it is that makes you don't like the Spice Girls, you're missing out, especially in that context. Mm-hmm. Uh during coitus, I'm gonna go with uh, "No Ordinary Love" by Sade because it's extremely sexy and it's like seven minutes long, mm. so it gives you gives you some time to do your thing. That helps, and hopefully you don't crap out uh, halfway through or even worse, a quarter through. But <laughs> uh, it's a nice long song that gives you time to operate, you know. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, at the end, uh, how could you not uh, want to hear After the Love and Ingr- Engelbert <laughs> Humperdinck? I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, it's perfect. That's a good one. Might be, it might come off as a little cheesy, but it, it seems <laughs> nope. like a good way to end any sort of coital encounter. It just, it, it, that's exact. The that's, song was crafted what, what, for that whole purpose. What other song is so explicitly about that? Uh, exactly. And he's going to sing to you after the right. love. Yeah. <laughs> In this case, he's going to, someone is going to rip bong hits after the love and next to you, but uh, no, I didn't, those I didn't, are. Didn't know that we were supposed to be doing that this whole time. Mm-hmm. I don't know about supposed to, but it's it's a different take on the proverbial cigarette after sex, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I think that's that's a good trio. I feel good about that one. Uh, I've got one song that for me works for all three. Oh, okay. And. Uh, I'm gonna go Thelma Houston. Don't leave me this way. Mm. Mm. I think it's uh, you've got you've got your uh, your smooth, quiet intro. I was just about to say. So you're saying all three stages in one song? Yes. No. Yeah. That that uh, that. I, and then I, I, I'm with you. And then as soon as ah, well, yeah. you know, and then it kicks in, and then the bass is thumping it. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's yeah. a good take on it. Yeah, I, 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 and that's a pretty lengthy song. It is. So. It's it's one of those disco songs that does jam out for a little while. If there's maybe there's an extended mix out there in case you you, you want to well, allow yourself more time since you're packing all three stages into one song. Yeah, oh, that's a great call. There, there's probably a 12 inch uh, mix. Out yeah, there, there is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Dake Dylan Hall, for your Yordo questions. And if we you, just, we just can't quit you, Dake. No, we can't. 
If you want to send your Yardo questions to us, uh, go to potofthunder.com, click that widget, send not one, Bean not two. Dake would be the take on it. <laughs> Three questions our way. Make it happen. And we will be back with more. Pot. Uh, 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 uh,